who ask me whether or not I believe in ghosts. I should not like to say ye eh, and I should not like to say ye nay. But this much I can tell you. I believe in ghosts. <laughs> and I shall tell you why. But be warned, it is a story that will chill your very marrow. Oh, isn't it? Well, it's sitting next to you. <laughs> I see. Well, whoever's marrow it is, <laughs> this story will chill it. My story begins, finally, <laughs> at that time in my life when I was a country vicar. It was the year 18 blank, and I was fortunate <laughs> enough to have secured in the prosperous market town of Blanksbury the living of the church of the Blessed Virgin Blank. <laughs> well, one warm August evening, I was alone in the vestry, flicking through some of the dirty bits in the book of Ezekiel. <laughs> it can't stop you if it's actually in the Bible. You're supposed to read it. All of a sudden, there was a knock at the vestry door, and there entered a young man in bowler hat and bicycle clips. A begging your pardon, your reverence. The name's Nubbin, sir. I'm a junior clerk with the firm of Anderson, Anderson and Son. Oh, yes, I've passed your confusing office. You deal in leather, I believe. Uh, leatherette, sir, principally novelty tax disc holders. Oh, what fun. <laughs> yes, sir. Anyway, I wondered if I might be so bold as to ask you to step round the corner and do us an exorcism. An exorcism? Yes, sir. We've got a ghost in and we'd like you to get rid of it. <laughs> My good nubbins, said I. There are no such things as ghosts. And I am as certain about that as I am certain I will never receive any kind of comeuppance for saying so. <laughs> Even so, uh, replied my guest, if you could just do us a quick exorcism, we'd be most obliged. I've already told you I don't believe in such folly. Yes, sir, but I'm hoping that even if you don't, the ghost will. Well, this was inarguable, and so I threw a bell, <laughs> book and candle into a carpet bag, gave it a shake, and then tried to remember them all within 60 seconds. <laughs> Having had my fun, I then <laughs> followed the worthy nubbins to his place of business. And a drear enough place it was. Tallow candles glimmered in their niches, casting long flickering shadows out across the tall oaken desks and the ink-spattered ledgers that sat thereon. In short, it was the very acme of a soulless modern office. <laughs> Why, said I, this is the least spooky place imaginable. I could as soon imagine a haunting in one of those freshly built neo-Gothic mansions that are springing up everywhere these days. <laughs> well, maybe so, but nonetheless, sir, it's here the ghost walks at nine o'clock sharp. Very well, then. I shall stay the night. Stay the night? Certainly. That's how little regard I have for your spook. Well, sir, it's more than I would like to do. Will you join me? I literally just said I didn't want to. <laughs> Very well, then I shall see you on the morrow. I settled down for my vigil. I was hardly surprised when nine o'clock came and went without spectral visitation. The evening stretched into night. But that didn't surprise me either. <laughs> it had happened before. <laughs> it was a dull enough evening I spent. But I amused myself as best I could by reading my book by the light of my candle and occasionally ringing my bell. <laughs> I was awoken at half past eight the next morning by Nubbins' arrival at the office. Well, sir, I said, I've sat up all night and nothing more ghostly to show for it than a crick in the neck. Nubbins looked at me in surprise. Well, naturally we haven't seen him yet. Did I not tell you he walks at nine? Yes, but what, nine in the morning? <laughs> yes, sir. Then why did you bring me over last night? I didn't. You just followed me. I thought it was odd. <laughs> anyway, hush, sir, for this short conversation has improbably taken half an hour. And it is <laughs> nine o'clock. <laughs> Barely were the words out of his mouth when, to my amazement, I saw it. A pillar of white mist moving through the very oak of the door and resolving itself into human form. And then it spoke. Morning, Nubbins. Beastly weather. Now then, where are we with the liver sedge, Walter? Uh, only a little behind, sir. We're waiting on the tallies from Birmingham. Uh, very well. Well, you chase them up then, and in the meantime, pray bring me the Appleby dockets. I'd do it myself, but as you know... Yeah, I... Physical matter slips uselessly through your ectoplasmic form. Yeah. <laughs> Precisely so. Well, I'll be in my office. At this point, I found my tongue. It was in the usual place. <laughs> I whispered to Nubbins, then this is he? Yes, sir. He died three weeks ago, but it didn't seem to take. His spirit walks this office from nine to five. He doesn't even stop for lunch anymore. I wish you'd exercise him. I'm fed up of it. Very well, said I, and called out boldly. Avant, unquiet spirit. Eh? Ah, I beg your pardon, sir. I didn't see you there, which is ironic. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. I, I allude to the fact that I am myself more or less translucent. Is that irony, or is that just a, 
a funny thing. <laughs> I'm never sure. Uh, any, anyway, how can I help? Spirit, in the name of the Holy Father, I conjure you to return from whence you came. What, outside? <laughs> no, from the realm of the dead. Uh, uh, no, thank you. I've only just got here. I command thee. Oh, I see. Or what? Or I'll ring this bell. <laughs> Light this candle. And what about the book? Yes, I'll read the book as well. Ooh, Ezekiel. <laughs> Not necessarily. <laughs> be any of the bits. Uh, I see. Well, uh, f- fair enough. I'll be in my office if you need me. Uh, careful with the candle. Yeah, but, but Richard Spirit. The name's Anderson. Richard Anderson. Richard Anderson. <laughs> Richard Richard Anderson. Why do you walk? The same as all ghosts. Unfinished business. And with whom is your unfinished business? Well, uh, at the moment, I'm trying to wrap up the Liversedge account. Ah. <laughs> and then, if the Liversedge account was once to be finally unenwrapped, you would be at peace. <laughs> no, no, you, you appear to have no notion of business, sir. Oh, my unfinished business is the business of my business. All business is unfinished business. That's, that's what business is. <laughs> then you will never be at rest. No, 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 I'm, I'm not like one of those lucky devils who die wishing they know who murdered them or that Mary Jane might know they love her. Although, by the way, if you see Mary Jane, please tell her I love her, uh, <laughs> even though she murdered me. No. <laughs> My business is to run this firm until it either ceases trading or, I suppose, it trades so successfully that it garners all the money in the world and has therefore won. <laughs> Which, given that we are a small novelty leather goods retailer, seems, seems to be reaching a trifle high. I have never heard of such a case. Yes, not many of us business ghosts about. Just me, Jacob Marley, and, oddly enough, the fellow who invented Bovril. <laughs> he really believes in it. So, you see, you, you know that tiresome saying that no one on their deathbed ever wished they'd spent more time at the office? Well, I did, and so here I am. But stay. I wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> Did you not say that your unfinished business would be finished if your firm ceased trading? Oh, well, yes, naturally, if my business was finished, that would finish my business. <laughs> Very well, then. My Christian duty is clear. I must start up a rival business and put your business out of business. Right, I've had about enough of you. Also, you've made the word business go funny on me. <laughs> Which, as you can imagine, is particularly annoying for someone in my position. What? <laughs> The ghost of a businessman whose unfinished business is the business of his business. Stop saying it! And don't you dare set up a rival enterprise. Do you not yearn for the eternal quiet of the grave? No, do you? No, but I'm not dead. Oh, that's right. Rub it in. (laughs) With that, he swept into his office. But my resolve was unshaken. It was quite clear. The only way to help this poor troubled spirit was for me to put him out of business. I bought up the shop next door and began. Now, Blansbury is a smallish town, and truth to tell, there was barely enough custom to support one medium-sized wholesaler of novelty leather at tax disc holders, still less two, especially when you bear in mind that the owner of one was a vicar who didn't really want to do it, (laughs) and the owner of the other was dead, (laughs) and that no one had yet invented the motor car. Aggravatingly, our respective strengths and weaknesses turned out to be perfectly balanced. His knowledge of the field was offset by my ability to shake hands without it going right through. (laughs) I could open doors, he didn't have to pay taxes. And so we struggled on. Years went by in this manner. And then decades. And then it was now. So, in answer to your question, sir, that is how I became the second largest manufacturer of leatherette novelty items in the county of Blankshire. <laughs> hmm? Oh, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, that's right, apologies. Yes, um, no, that is why I believe in ghosts, because I saw one once and spent the next four decades of my life locked in an attritional business rivalry with it. <laughs> and now, sir, be so good as to place your hand upon that marrow. Told you so. Chilled to perfection. <laughs> It's a laborious method of refrigeration, but you cannot argue with the results. (laughs) Good night. 
Finnemore's Souvenir Programme was written and performed by John Finnemore with Margaret Claiborne Smith, Simon Kane, Laurie Lewin and Carrie Quinlan. Original music was written by Susanna Pierce and performed by Susanna Pierce and Sally Stairs. The producer was Ed Morris and it was a BBC Studios production. And if you haven't heard about the BBC's exciting new Sounds app, then congratulations! You are the last person in Britain to remain unaware of it and you have won a prize. The prize is that the Director-General will shortly be arriving at your house to explain it to you personally. Thank you.